أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل ودل خير مما كفر وألها وقليل يغنيك خير من كثير يطغيك وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين وبعد الله سبحانه وتعالى سيس إن سورة الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإذا نفخ في الصور نفخة واحدة وحملت الأرض والجبال فدكتا دكة واحدة فيومئذ وقعت الواقعة وانشقت السماء فهي يومئذ واهية والملك على أرجائها ويحمل عرش ربك فوقهم يومئذ ثمانية يومئذ تعرضون لا تخفى منكم خافية So as I told you last Friday we discussed this ayat and now inshallah we're going to just make a brief tafsir before we go to our recitation part. So if you'd like to improve your recitation inshallah your tajweed just remain seated after the halaqa for the tajweed part inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking here about the day of judgment as we mentioned last Friday he is speaking about uh, uh, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ When the horn will be blown with one blast. وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالِ فَدُكَّتَ دَكَّةً وَاحِدَةٌ Then he said the earth and the mountains will be lifted and leveled. The surface of the earth will be flat, will be even. And then he said, فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةٌ On that day the resurrection will happen. فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةٌ وَانْشَقَّتِ السَّمَاءِ فَهِيَ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَاهِيَةٌ And then he mentioned some other horrors that will happen in the day of Qiyamah that we will look at the sky and we will find some cracks, we will find some uh, breaks, it will break into small parts. فَهِيَ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَاهِيَةٌ It's going to be weak. وَالْمَلَكُ عَلَىٰ أَرْجَائِهَا The angels, because they live inside of the heavens, they will have to go outside because their house is being destroyed now, the, السماء, the heavens. They will go outside عَلَىٰ أَرْجَائِهَا On the ages of the heavens. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٌ And eight of them will be carrying, will be bearing the throne of your master, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the lesson is, يَوْمَئِذٍ تُعْرَضُونَ لَا تَخْفَى مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَةٌ Today you will be presented, you will be exposed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing of our good and bad deeds will be hidden. Everything will be exposed. So the question now, we said that we're trying to maintain excellence in this world through the understanding of the hereafter. The question now is why we sometimes find ourselves heedless, living, living in this life heedlessly. We're not concentrating about the akhirah. Even if somebody reminds us of death or the hereafter, we are not happy because we don't like to hear about this. We like to hear something about life, not to listen to some lectures about death. I like to, if you tell me about Na'im al-Qabr, the favors or the good way that people are dealt with in the grave. But I don't like to hear about the torture, uh, the t- uh, torture that will, will take place in the grave. Just tell me something positive, don't tell me some, something negative. So we're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes tells us something to fear us so we try to get closer to Him. Why we sometimes find ourselves heedless? We don't even think about the Akhirah because of four reasons. Because of four reasons. أَرْضَعُ النَّاسُ الْلِطُوا عَلَيَّ إِلَّا لِشِدَّةِ شُقْوَةِ وَعَنَائِ إِبْلِيسُ وَالدُّنْيَا وَنَفْسِي وَالْهَوَى كَيْفَ الْخَلَاصُ وَكُلُّهُمْ أَعْدَائِ We have four enemies in this world. 
The first enemy is a shaitan, Iblis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Iblis in the Quran as an enemy. He said, Inna shaytana lakum adawun. Indeed, Iblis, shaytan, is an enemy for you. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ adawwa. Then take him as an, as an enemy. Take him as an enemy. That's really important, subhanAllah. Sometimes we find some people, they might take shaytan, their friend. They might plot against you even more than what the shaytan himself can do. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, when he described the plans of the shaytan, he described it as weak. He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا Indeed, the plot of shaytan has ever been weak. It's very easy to deal with the shaytan. Because of what? Because you know that he is your enemy. Because you know that he is your enemy. Allah said, فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوَّ Deal with him, take him as an enemy. So you're aware of him. So it's easy on you. كَيْدَهُ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا his, his blots are very weak. But on the other hand, the story of Sayyidina Yusuf السلام, when women plotted against him and he was put into the jail because of some plots, of human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّهُ مِنْ كَيْدِ كُنَّا إِنَّ كَيْدَ كُنَّا عَظِيمٌ Indeed, your plans are great. When you plot against somebody, you might destroy his life. Why? Because I deal with humans in a kind way, and I don't expect him to plot against me or to plan something to harm me. I don't take him as an enemy. That's why when he plots against you, it's great. It really harms you. But for the shaytan, just أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, he will go away. الإخلاص والمعوذتين, he will go away. That's it. So this is our first enemy that makes us sometimes live in this life heedlessly, not remembering the akhirah. The second reason, الدنيا. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he described the life of this world in the Quran, he said, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And indeed, this world is nothing but the enjoyment of delusion. It's just delusion. And the Shaykh came here one time and he was giving a halaqa about this world, the reality of the world. And he said, it's like a shop that somebody allows you to go into the store and buy whatever you want, but in two minutes, you have everything that you would like, you would love to have in your house, inside of that store. You're allowed to go inside only for two minutes, but there are some very beautiful paintings on the walls. Don't try to look at them, because if you look at them, you will get busy, and you will waste your time, and you will not achieve your purpose, which is to grab and take as much goods, as much good as you can for yourself. But you go inside and you get busy looking at the paintings and the beautiful things inside that store and you forget to take some goods for yourself. That's exactly what happens in this world. We have only two minutes living in this world. Our lives compared to the world or the life of this world is just like two minutes. We go inside and you are busy with this world. We look at the dunya and we don't get any hasanat, we don't count and collect good deeds as much as we can. So number two, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Number three, وَنَفْسِي My own self. I'm free. I'm free. Whatever somebody says to you, this is haram, this is halal, you have to deal financially in this certain way, you have to eat this in this certain way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is haram and this is halal. You say, I'm free, I can do whatever you want. I want. But actually the fact is that we are not free. We're actually slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are abid. And if we become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we go from the level of abid to the level of ibad. Which, which means worshippers. قَالَ تَعَالَى وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَنْ أَبْدِ هَوْنَا So the Fulqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he described Ibad al-Rahman, the slaves of the most merciful, and he mentioned some of their good deeds. He didn't say Abid al-Rahman. He said Ibad al-Rahman. 
It's very close to it. Abid and Ibad. Abid means slave. We are the slaves of Allah. But if we're closer to Him, we're called Ibad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among His Ibad, good worshippers. Allahumma ameen. So nafsi, nafsi, my own self might be my enemy that makes me live in this life actually heedless of the Akhirah. Number four, walhawa. Following my desires. قال عز وجل سورة مريم فخلف من بعده خلف أضاع الصلاة واتبع الشهوات فسوف يلقون غيا. When he mentioned some of his prophets and messengers in Surah Maryam, he immediately after said, after them will come a people who will أضاع الصلاة. They will neglect the prayer. Number two, they will follow the shahwat. They will follow the desires. They will follow their lusts. And then the the result for this فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّ They will be thrown into غَيْ And a غَيْ is a name of one of the valleys of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. Allahumma ameen. So now we have four enemies. إِبْلِيسُ شَيْطَانِ وَالدُّنْيَا This world وَنَفْسِ My own self وَالْهَوَى My desires. My own self I'm free and my desires I do whatever I want. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he knows that the insan, the word insan, it comes from the word, the root nasiya, to forget. And that's why we always forget about the akhirah and we need to remind each other. And that's subhanallah, one time in the he was talking to the sahaba themselves, the best of generations ever. The best of generations ever. And he was saying to them, لَيْسَ لِلْمَرْءِ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ إِلَّا مَا عَقَلَ مِنْهَا Nobody will be rewarded for his prayer except for what he understands. When he focuses and concentrates in his prayer, whatever part he focuses on, he will get the reward for that, for that part. But whatever else is going to be added to his skill of hasanat. This is a big challenge that we have. And then Nabi Aslam mentioned some portions, portions that people will gain from their prayers and he stopped at the half. He never mentioned that somebody will gain the whole word of his prayer. It's pretty scary. قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ينصرف أحدكم من صلاته يعني يسبق له صحابة. Some of you might leave his prayer. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. ولا يكتب له إلا عشرها. Only tenth, only a tenth of his prayer will be written down for him. Only a tenth. And then he said ربعها. Only one quarter, one eighth, you know, and then until he said one half, and then he, he didn't mention وسلم, that some people will be rewarded for the whole prayer. It's pretty scary. It means it's not easy to concentrate in the prayer because we're thinking about our work, we're thinking about our family issues, we're thinking about our schools, and we are heedless even inside the prayers. So try to concentrate. If you don't understand the Quran, try to pick up some words and reflect on them if you don't know Arabic. When you go, Subhan Rabbi al Azim, Subhan Rabbi al A'la, reflect on what you're saying. So you will gain as much as, as much as you can from the reward of the prayer. Otherwise, I don't know. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards all of us for our prayers. And Mahat Muhammad said, two people might pray in the same line next to each other, shoulder to shoulder, feet to feet, and the distance between their prayers is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. Because this person is concentrating on each single word. And he's actually crying. He's as if Allah Ta'ala is speaking to him personally. But the other guy is actually is heedless. He think about something else. So the reward is, is also different because of concentration, because of intention, because of you know what he thinks in his prayer. So the last thing that I would like to end with inshaAllah before we go to the recitation part, and I would like to invite you to join us if you want, inshallah, to improve your recitation. The last thing is how to perfect my life through the understanding of the Akhirah. I have only two steps for uh, you, inshallah, to mention. The first story, I mean, the first step is a saying by Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Wazinu a'malakum qabla an tuzanu. وتزينوا للعرض الأكبر. Then he recited, يوم إذ تعرضون لا تخفى منكم خافية. The ayah that we're, we're making tafsir of now. He said, Allah, hold yourself accountable before you are held accountable. What does it mean? Like every day before I sleep, I hold myself accountable 
through thinking about the whole day. Whatever you have done today. It's actually a lot easier at the beginning. I've tried it in the past and I, for, I forgot a lot. Like I can't do it every night because it's not easy to remember, you know. We go to bed sometimes very tired and I don't have time that, you know, before I sleep I should reflect and should hold myself accountable. Sometimes I really forget. But it is it's a very important step every single night before you close your eyes, you lie down in your bed, just think about whatever you have done in this world. Just ask yourself, have I actually oppressed anybody? Have I dealt with anybody unjustly? What about my wife? Did I deal with her in, in, in any way that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What about my children? Am I taking care of them? What about my prayers in jama'ah? Can I pray in jama'ah or not? Have I recited so that kaf on Friday? Have I recited some Quran today? The whole day, 24 hours. Have I recited even 15 minutes Quran? Only just 10 minutes adhkar? Only two prayers in jama'ah? Just think about whatever you've done. Did, 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 have, have I helped somebody to the use in need? Because in the day of Qiyamah, we'll be held to account. You, know, you don't know. We are going to be asked. So do it here. It's better for us if we do it here. And then he said, And weigh your deeds before they are weighed for you. On the day of Qiyamah, you know, we have the skill of hasanat, good deeds, and the skill of, and, and the skill of uh, good deeds and bad deeds. You know, they will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will weigh all of this for us. Just do it in this world first before you meet Rabbi Alameen. This is the saying of Sayyidina Umar. And then he recited the ayah, On that day you will be exposed, you will be presented, nothing will be hidden. The second step, inshallah, I will end up with is to prioritize uh, our life. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, is everything else. من جعل الهموم هم واحدا هم المعاد كفاه الله سائر همومه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said if you make your intention if you make your first priority your first هم you know هم means something that you think about all day some people their هم is their children because they love them so much it's okay some people their هم is how much I'm gonna gain today how much money I can make this month هم something you think about every day your intention you know من جعل الهم هم واحد if you make this هم this intention only one هم المعاد المعاد means the meeting the appointment which appointment with Allah سبحانه وتعالى everybody has an appointment with رب العالمين will meet Allah right so if you make your intention your هم only one thing which is meeting رب العالمين كفاه الله سائر همومنا بس everything is gonna be is gonna is gonna fall into place everything else is gonna fall into place but if you think about some other stuff and you wake up in the morning very busy about work you should be thinking about your work but you put Allah سبحانه وتعالى first how to please Allah سبحانه وتعالى your school your children your car your whatever we have a lot of issues right if we start thinking about these different stuff everything is gonna be messed up. But just focus on Rabbil Alameen and everything is going to fill into place. Insha'Allah. So these are two steps. Muhasaba, to help, to hold yourself accountable. Number two is to prioritize our life. Jazakumullah khayran. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa inida al-fa'amilu. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin fil awaleen. Salli alayhi fil akhireen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم عافنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا وإلى غيرك لا تكلنا ومن شرور عبادك سلمنا آمين 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 وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته